right, so we're gonna do a little bit more comment content. Like I know everybody wanted. Um, I'm sorry, y'all. My life is just right now. There's a lot more going on than this car. So this guy is just so far on the back burner. It's unreal. If you didn't check out the Plymouth video, the new project, you definitely need to check it out because this channel is gonna have a ton of content on the new car. So we just wanna leave this guy alone. We wanna get this thing together and we want to do a bunch of testing with it and have fun with it and drive it. When the cars are done, they're just, they're done. They're done. The build is where it is at. So um, let's push ourselves. I have zero motivation uh, to mess with this thing. Like. I like to be transparent with y'all, 100%. I have no motivation at all to work on this car. Does anybody wanna buy a race car? My email's in the description. If you wanna buy a race car, turnkey, ready to go, shoot me an email if you got some some real cash, not some bullcrap cash, it's not a yard sale. But let's get the wheel stats put in this thing on a serious note. Um, so we got this kit, let me show you what we got. Uh, this is the kit from Summit. Man, I cuss out, of course I cut right through it or no they did looks like msr 8080 might be the part number uh this is one john yeah 8080 from summit so if you type in msr 8080 or type in the 5 8 by 18 by 3 inch drive stuff kit should be good to go so i showed in a previous video but we gained a ton of subs um since then obviously uh, let's see here we need to tap these wheels. So we're gonna get this thing jacked up where the rear end is hanging. We'll get the tires taken off and then we need to tap this. Basically this goes through, I'll show you. And then we got a spacer that goes on it just like all race cars like that. And then we got the lug nut that goes on there. So um, let's get this thing up, let's get these wheels up and let's see if we can tap it. I've talked to John. Uh, if you haven't checked out Turbo John Racing on YouTube, check him out. Very smart. I know a lot of my subs might not be on his channel. Go check out Turbo John. Um, he told me basically what to try. As long as we have enough meat there to bite, we're sending this thing. So uh, let's get to work. locks are still for sale. I'm in Wilmington, North Carolina. I am aggressively lowering them on Facebook. I think I lowered them today for sixteen hundred bucks. Uh, the bead rocks, they the bead locks, they are the Ford lug pattern five on four and a half. They are roughly fifteen by twelve wides. Um, they're really close to twelves. And they're double B-lock from MacFab. I never even ran them. You've seen on the channel, we fitted them up. Um, I don't want them. They're in my way, y'all. 1600 bucks. Get them out of here. I've been trying to get rid of a bunch of crap to get this stuff out of my way. This is what's on here now. So these are half-inch studs. These are way longer. I think they're three-inch. Uh, we're going to pound them out is the first step. Pound them out. And then John thinks that there's enough of the little, uh, what's it called, the knoll? or whatever it's called, the nail, knoll, whatever the little things is. He thinks there's enough in there that you can just tap the existing hole. Uh, he's done it in the past and there's enough meat to thread it in. This stud kit that we got, we got it um, specifically for doing this because it bolts to the back side, and then of course your rim goes on and then the lug nut goes to the front side. So you're basically, you're sandwiching everything together. So even if you had no threads in here, if you just drilled it out and the stud moved around, that'd be absolute nightmare to put it on, impossible to put the wheel on just about. But if you could accomplish it and somehow get to the backside, you would be just clamping everything together. So we just need to get it to tap just to hold the lugs or the studs in there so that you can get the wheel on. And then when you run the lug nut up, of course, everything will be pulling together. So let's get a stud out. To get the stud out, you simply just take a hammer I'm not going to do it on camera because it's really loud. And you literally just beat the studs out. Uh, that's how you change studs. Pretty easy. Um, let's beat it out and tap it. Now the stud or the tap that you're going to get for this kit is going to be a 5 8 by 18. Um, that is going to match your uh, studs that you're putting in. All right, so we've got it started with just, just a couple turns. Just enough to hold it. Um, you should be using like cutting lube. I'm just using air compressor oil. It really doesn't matter. And we're gonna try to put these things in as straight as we can. Being the hole is already there, I'm pretty sure that you kind of can't mess this up. That I guess you can mess the threads up, but it's gonna follow the hole that's already drilled there. But you still want to try to 
um, start as straight as possible. I've got the car jacked up extremely high um, so that it's at a comfortable working height, if that makes sense. So I'm not, like my knee, let's see here if you can see, um, let's bring you out. My knee is rested on my elbow, so I've got a very firm plant. You know, my arm's planted, and then I can push in just a little bit. I'm not pushing in on this one, but I can grab it like that and push in just a little bit. And we're already almost all the way through. Um, let's get something to flush that out with real fast. So let's, let's just hit some more WD-40. First, we'll change to WD-40, and then we'll flush this thing out here in a second. Brake parts cleaner. Try our first stud. Man, dude, if y'all haven't checked out Turbo John Racing on YouTube, you need to do it. This man is so smart. Look at that, man. That thing is like butter. Look at that. Shout out to John. John, you are the freaking man, my guy. We gotta clean up this axle while we're underneath here. Dude, this thing is covered in dust. Good God. Is the bottom of y'all's car covered in dust like this? Man, dude, that's unacceptable. Ah. Nobody looks at the bottom of my car. All right, let's see here. Let's flush that out some more. We don't want nothing in the threads. axle off man look at that pretty blue paint all right let's try to get a stud i don't 100 which one which side goes in i think it's gonna be that short side yeah that makes sense the most sense look at that five eight studs just like that that simple. And you gotta pull the freaking thing out of the car, dude. Screw that on the back. Let's get some vice grips and uh, that size. All right, that's just so that we can snug it down tight. Wrench size is gonna be a 15 16 have your brake rotor i've actually got a spacer also that i run on there i don't know if i'm still able to run that unfortunately and then these will go on there you know so you can put your lug nut on and but all that there's so many people that are like oh you got to send the axles off you know it's got to be drilled on a freaking uh you know like a lathe it's got to be all this stuff redrilled um a lot and john was just like dude it's simple it's not hard please check out turbo john racing on youtube if you're not subscribe to john he's such a good guy so helpful um just absolutely amazing so that's a big relief that these studs are not gonna be hard to do it is like 10 15. it has been a minute since i've worked in the garage this late it's just now i have found motivation to get this car out of this freaking garage so we can get the plymouth in here because we are gonna shove this thing in storage it's gonna either be in storage or the racetrack Make sure that thing is straight. Figured I'd show y'all how one of these goes. It, this is literally so easy. So amazing. After this one, I just have two more to do. And then we'll have one side done, but I don't want to put the wheel back on this side. 
because I want to check. Uh, I want the brakes off of it, and I want to check to see if the brakes are dragging on the rear because I'm. I think the car doesn't roll like quite as smooth as I want it to. Like I feel like this car is like three thousand pounds, and actually we weighed it. Yeah, I think it's like thirty. Um, I feel like it doesn't roll as smooth as it was. So the drag can either be in the transmission or it could be the brakes. We, we have a little bit of drag on the front, but I don't feel like enough to affect what, what I'm feeling. And then Kevin, when we went to TKM with this thing, uh, what he's seen on the dyno or whatever, and what he said should be making is he felt like the, something was holding the car back. So he was wondering if the transmission had issues and I remember that's when we took the transmission apart like we took the pan apart and the pan was literally clean like no no metal no clutch material hardly nothing like beautiful absolute beautiful checkup uh, when we went into the transmission pan so I'm I want to spin it without brakes on it so that's literally all you do and it doesn't cut much thread in it at all like it's just it's just a little bit it literally screws in. Um, two more to do. Let's put it back in neutral and rotate the axle. In case anybody asking, what are we using to turn this thing with? Let's see here. What is this? A 7 16th? Yes, this is a 7 16th 12 point. That's what I'm using to turn this with. All right, for anybody that's wondering about the thread, there's the thread. So it's just a little bit. Not like it's a ton. There's the thread, basically how it cuts. So this method just works absolutely amazing. And as you've seen on that one, we're about to put the other ones in. It's enough to bite it, to bite it, to turn it in. Um, so you can get your bolt on the back side right there. And now this stud is in there tight. And whenever you go to uh, clamp your wheel on, you're sandwiching everything together like this. So these threads literally don't matter um, for structural integrity, I guess you could say. It's literally to hold the stud in place, to hold it tight, hold it so it doesn't move like this, it doesn't move around and wiggle inside the hole. Uh, it's just enough to hold it so that it can, that bolt can clamp down. And once that bolt is clamped down on the backside, that nut is clamped down on the backside, this stud is not moving, it's not going nowhere. Uh, I'll probably have some people in the comments that disagree with me on this method, uh, but it's been proven. Uh, to work in the past by uh, other racers. And by no way, shape, or form am I calling myself, myself a racer. I'm not a racer, I'm a builder. And again, once you run these studs in there by hand, I'm taking the vice grip and I'm clamping it on there tight enough so that the vice grip will tighten the stud up in there, okay, until, until the vice grip slips, all right? So right there, the vice grip slips. So I can forcefully turn the vice grip, it's just spinning on that shank, um, so that means that the thread engagement, there's enough on the 5.8 stud that, uh, there's enough thread in the axle and the 5.8 stud that it will literally hold for you to crank the vice grips. It's not like it's just barely, um, hanging in there. And as we tighten this down, you'll see, uh, these are, uh, oops, these are locking nuts okay so they are the nylon locking nuts and that's that uh stud uh, hasn't been turning but you can hold it with a vice grip and it doesn't move so i mean dude that's that's got plenty of threading uh thread engagement so again same method just that one it's a lot looser i ran them up with my hands my fingers as tight as I could. So let's get this last one on. All right, so test fitting my spacer and my spacer doesn't go on. So this was a, it goes on right there. All right, so it goes on, but then it, um, it goes on, but then it stops. Don't go past the, uh, the shank. So looking at this, if we measure this out, Okay, so this thing is 11 sixteenths. Okay, that's what size the shank is. When we come on the spacer, 
the spacers, get them in frame. That won't go in there, okay? It has to be, to get that to go in there, let's see, it has to be shrunk down right there, which is going to be, pull up a 85, 128, whatever that is. So it's smaller than 11 16th, because if we open it up, right there is 11 16th opened up and go back on top of that so that means that i need to drill my spacers now and my uh brake rotors out to 11 16th to uh match this and then also make sure the rims um are opened up to 11 16th to make sure they are correct because slipping them on they do the exact same thing as the spacer is they go over and the spacer was a machine piece um, they go over the, the threads, but then there's not quite enough uh, for the shank to go through there. And it's not like these are off-centered um, or anything because literally, like I just showed you, the opening in the hole, the hole is not as big as uh, this shank right here. This shank is bigger than the holes in this, and this shank is a little tiny, tiny bit bigger than the holes that are in the rim. So I think literally we just need to run 11 16th drill bit through these items to clean them up, um, you know, and then everything should go right on together. I just wanted to show everyone this real fast. The, the wheel that we've been using, this fits tight inside of my rim, okay? This, this um, lug nut. So it measures out, that is tight. As you can see, it, it moves around the calipers, okay? It measures back to that 87, 128 um, is what that, that measures to. This has to be opened up to the 11 16 So if we roll our knob this way to open it up, oh, we went past it, or did we? Let's see here, I wanna keep the camera rolling. I'm not gonna edit this out, 11 16 right there. So when we open this up to the 11 16 which is what the shank measures on the um, the stud, you can see this is loose. See how that's loose now, 11 16 So that just goes to show you that everything on my current setup is not for 11 16 I literally just busted the end caps off of these. We're getting a lot nicer lug nuts now on this go around. So the whole rims, the spacers, everything was not um drilled to fit these shanks so we're gonna have to run a drill bit through them but no big deal so with that said if you're gonna do this project get you the tap that i showed you get you the stud kit that i showed you and go ahead and order yourself an 11 16th drill bit just to make sure that your rims are nice and clean and there's no burrs inside of them or you know there's nothing inside of them from you know if you've been using a half inch because everything of mine was set up a half inch. When the rims were ordered, they were ordered for half inch. Um, however, most rims are supposed to be drilled out for the five eighths. And then you use a shank style lug nut and that converts it over to uh, the half inch. Smash that like button for me. It's a small thank you if you think, if you like this video, hopefully you'll stick around for the next build uh, that's gonna be coming up and we're gonna get this car out of here to the track soon. Uh, I'll see y'all later, thanks.